What if you could add powerful automations to Home Assistant in minutes without writing complex YAML or starting from scratch every time? Blueprints make that possible, and every time I cover them on this channel, the response has been huge. So based on that feedback, in this video, I'm sharing five more brilliant Home Assistant blueprints that can instantly level up your smart home. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek, a channel that's all about Home Assistant and smart home technology. If you've been using Home Assistant for any length of time, you'll know just how flexible it is. You can build automations entirely by hand, create them through the UI, or, and this is one of my personal favorites, use blueprints to get powerful automations up and running quickly. Blueprints let you take something that's already been well thought out, drop it straight into your setup and tailor it to your own devices and needs. And in this video in my Smart Home Christmas series, I've got five more Home Assistant blueprints that do exactly that, adding genuinely useful features to your Smart Home with minimal effort. If you're completely new to blueprints, then I'll leave a link in the description to my blueprints playlist so that you can get up to speed on all the great ones I've featured previously. And as always, you'll find links to every blueprint I feature in this video down below in the description as well. So the first blueprint I'm looking at is called Cover Control Automation, and this has been developed by someone who goes by the name of Herr Vorigand. And this looks to be a perfect blueprint for anyone with smart shades, blinds, and curtains. I know many people try and set up automations to close the curtains or blinds when the sun is at a certain position to stop rooms warming up, and it can be a tricky thing to get it just right. But as you can see here, there's lots of options available with this one. So if I just add the blueprint to my Home Assistant setup, we can take a look at what's available. Okay, so starting off, we need to select a cover. Uh, so I've got my Smart Wings blind here, and then I've got automation options so I can configure it to open or close at certain times. Uh, I have it use the sun elevation and brightness sensors to control the shade if I've got those prevent it from closing when it's at certain positions, prevent it from being constantly opened and closed throughout the day. Uh, you know, good thing uh, for preventing your uh, battery from being drained. Uh, then you've got a helper uh, that you can use with this. And the author of the blueprint does recommend using that as then you kind of enable a lot of additional functionality as well. You've then got your cover position settings, so open, close, what shading looks like. Uh, obviously you need to use each of these types depending upon the type of shade that you've got installed. Then you've got uh, time control, so you can have different settings for work days and non-work days. Uh, so you'll need to install the workday integration uh, to be able to use that. Uh, there's some really well thought out configuration options here. Things like if it's a school day the next day, how many people, if they were building their own automation, would think of adding something like that into it? There's a lot more to configure here. Uh, you can hook up your weather forecast provider, uh, so that'll help with uh, sun shading configuration. You can have curtains remain closed while someone's still in bed. And uh, you've got manual overrides to all of this and the ability to perform other actions as well. So you know, when any of the automations are being run, uh, you could have it, for example, turn the uh, room light or TV on when your curtains have been drawn. Uh, you know, lots of things are possible here with that, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea of what this blueprint offers. I'm really impressed by this blueprint. I have both curtains and shades, and this offers a lot more configuration than the basic automations I have set up. Clearly, there's been a huge amount of effort gone into creating this for the community. So that's Cover Control Automation by Herr Vorigand. Check out the link in the description and go show some love for their hard work. 
Okay, so next on my list is a blueprint called Sensor Light Add-on, and this is by someone called Blackie. And if you've watched any of my previous blueprint videos, then you'll know that Blackie does a lot for the community and has created a massive amount of really useful blueprints. So when you're taking a look at this one, then be sure to check out the rest of the ones that have gone and created as well. Okay, so this is an interesting one as it's pitched as being something for your movie lights or you know maybe your house alarm or smoke detector and Blackie gives quite a few examples on the blueprint page but if I just get this one installed into Home Assistant then we can see how this one works. This one starts with a trigger something like a media player or smoke alarm. Uh, if I just select my TV and set that the TV needs to be turned on. And because it's a TV, I can now select what app uh, being used would trigger the automation. So this could be when the TV is turned on and I start up Plex or Apple TV. Uh, then we've got the off trigger state uh, that we can specify there. Uh, we can now specify lights that need to be turned off and not needed for the movie lights. Then we can specify the lights or scenes to be activated by the trigger. We can specify the brightness and the transition of those lights as well. Uh, we've even got an intermission uh, lights as well. So if you pause the movie, then the lights could all change to make the room a bit brighter. And likewise, when everything is finished, you can then control the lights at the end. I really like this one. Pretty straightforward configuration to get a real movie experience working in your smart home. There's some great functionality there and I'm sure some of you are probably looking at that and thinking how you're going to use it. Again, lots of effort gone into creating this to make things super easy to get impressive results up and running so quickly. So that's Sensor Light Add-on by Blackie. Check out the link in the description for this one. My third blueprint in this video is one called Sonoff NS Panel Blueprint, and this one is by Blackimas, and I don't think I've featured any of his blueprints before, but this one is certainly a very impressive one. If you're lucky enough to have a Sonoff NS Panel, or you're thinking of getting one, then this looks to be a great start. As you can see in these screenshots, you can create some impressive functionality with this blueprint. So let's get this one installed into Home Assistant to see what functionality it offers. And I don't have a Sonoff panel, but it doesn't stop me from checking out the functionality of the blueprint. So starting off, we need to select our panel, and then we've basically got various sections and settings for the different types of pages that will be displayed. So you've got your home page, which might have your weather details on it. You've got your climate page, and you just go through each one specifying your entity and how you want it styled on the panel. You know, different colors, fonts, and button sizes. Very simple to configure. Uh, you've also got multiple entity pages, so you can set up multiple rows of different entities to display on each page. And likewise, there's multiple button pages whereby you can do the same kind of thing. You've even got notifications, screensavers, and a media player settings page as well. I think that it's been really well thought out, keeping everything pretty simple to understand and configure according to your needs. So that's Sonoff NS Panel Blueprint by Blackie Mass. I think it's a very impressive blueprint for a very nice device, uh, you know, and it helps you create a really functional panel for your smart home. I'd be interested if you're using it already. How did it work out for you? Let me know in the comments below. Next up, and we've got adaptive fan speed control by someone by the name of Lennon101. And I was in two minds as to whether to include this one, as it's a fairly simple looking blueprint, but actually it's really quite powerful and quite clever and it was when I saw a comment regarding the blueprint showing how well it was maintaining the temperature in a room that I decided to put it into the video. So if I just get this one installed and first up you need to specify your temperature sensor and the fan that you want to control. Now if your fan doesn't have speeds that you can control then basically you're only going to be able to use some of the settings here, and that is just to kind of like, uh, you know, keep the temperature regulated a little bit in the room. And that's really what I did with one of my automations. 
If, however, you've got a fan where you can control the speed if required, then this does offer other features as well, which can help to quickly cool a room if required. Maybe you've got computer equipment in there or something else that could be affected by heat, then you can kind of you know, really get the temperatures to come down very quickly. Sometimes blueprints don't have to be super complicated to offer great functionality. And if you have rooms with fans in them that you need to maintain the temperature, then this looks to be a great blueprint to add to your Home Assistant collection. So that's adaptive fan speed control by Lennon 101. Check out the link in the description of this video. And finally, we have a Trigger Run On Timer by Blackie. And again, another seemingly simple blueprint that will no doubt turn out to be something super useful. So this one allows you to run devices or entities uh, on for a specific period of time whenever certain triggers occur. So let's get this one installed into Home Assistant. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot to this one. Um, you've got your settings whereby you can set the trigger state and entities to turn on by the trigger uh, and then have them turn off again after a period of time. Um, if you opt to use a timer helper here, then you do gain extra functionality, enabling you to be able to pause and cancel timers, um, you know, have them continue if maybe your home assistant um, server is rebooting or maybe you have a power outage. So you know, that can be really useful to set up and use that. Then you can set up your triggers that will turn on your entities. So that could be uh, motion sensors, buttons or lights, and also configure the runtime for that trigger. There's also a fifth trigger, and this basically enables you to uh, extend the timer that is running. So maybe you've got a heated blanket set up and whoever is using it isn't quite warm enough yet. So you have a button helper set up and when that's pressed, then it basically it will extend the timer by say another 15 minutes or whatever you configure it to be. This is a really interesting blueprint and yeah, I can see it being used for things like fans, pumps and that heated blanket, but I'd like to know how you would use this or if you're already using it, then what are you doing with it? Let me know in the comments down below. So that's Trigger Run On Timer by Blackie. Again, the link to that is in the video description. So there you go. That's five really clever Home Assistant blueprints. Hopefully something there for everyone. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite, or in fact, are you using any of them already? If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss the next video that I've got lined up across the rest of December as part of my 12 days of smart home Christmas. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.